In this video, I will be teaching you how to solve modulus equations in the form the absolute value of ax plus b is equal to the absolute value of cx plus d. Now before I start, I'd like to apologize for any background noise. I'm at my house right now and my dad is watching videos about COVID-19. My mom is vacuuming and talking on the phone and my brother is screaming for no reason. But anyway, let's say that we have an equation. The absolute value of x is equal to the absolute value of 5. And if we remember, absolute value is essentially the magnitude of a number. So therefore, the magnitude of x is equal to the magnitude of 5. And this can mean that either positive or negative x is equal to 5. And from this, we get that x is equal to 5 or x is equal to negative 5. And we'll solve equations in this form in a very similar way. I'd also like to mention that there are three methods. The first is through algebra. The second is by squaring. And the third is by graphing or drawing a graph. And I'll be going over each of these. So I recommend that you watch the whole entire video. So firstly, for solving it through algebra, let's say that we have the equation x plus 1, or the absolute value of x plus 1, is equal to the absolute value of x minus 5. Well, if you remember what we did above, we can essentially say that x plus 1 is equal to positive or negative x minus 5. And that's essentially what the absolute value means. We can either have, because the absolute value of negative x minus 5 is equal to the absolute value of x minus 5. So therefore, we can derive this. So either x plus 1 is equal to negative x minus 5, or x plus 1 is equal to x minus 5. And we can solve both of these equations. When we solve this, what we get is that x plus 1 is equal to negative x plus 5. Bring the x over, we get 2x is equal to 4, and x is equal to 2. And on this side of our equation, we can do x minus x is equal to minus 5 minus 1. We get 0 is equal to minus 6, which is impossible. We simply ignore this side of our equation. Therefore, we get our final answer that x is equal to 2. Let's look at another example just to kind of solidify this concept. Let's say that we have the absolute value of 2x plus 1, and this is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. And I recommend that you pause this right here and try to solve it yourself before I go on to solve it. Okay, so once again, we can, we have to understand what absolute value is. So we can say that 2x plus 1 is equal to either positive or negative x minus 3. Be and once again, that's because the absolute value of x minus 3 is the same thing as the absolute value of negative x minus 3 because they have the same magnitude. And we solve this. So we have 2x plus 1 is equal to x minus 3, or 2x plus 1 is equal to negative x minus 3. So we can solve this side first. We get 2x minus x is equal to minus 3 minus 3, or minus 1, sorry. So we get x is equal to minus 4. Over here we get 2x plus 1 minus is equal to minus x plus 3, 2x plus x is equal to 3 minus 1, 3x is equal to 2, and x is equal to 2 over 3. So in this case, where 2x plus 1 is equal to x minus 3, we get two answers for x. So x is either equal to negative 4, or x is equal to 2 over 3. And just to prove this, we can plug it back in. So we can get 2 times negative 4 plus 1, so the absolute value of that, 
is equal to the absolute value of negative 4 minus 3. This gives us minus 8 plus 1, which is minus 7, or the absolute value of minus 7, is equal to the absolute value of minus 7. And this is true. We can also try it for 2 over 3. So we get 2 times 2 over 3 plus 1. The absolute value of that is equal to um, 2 over 3 minus 3. This gives us a value of 4 over 3. Let's write this lower. 4 over 3 plus 3 over 3 is equal to the absolute value of 2 over 3 minus 3 is equal to 9 over 3. And this gives us, let's see, this is 7 over 3 is equal to the absolute value of negative 7 over 3, which is equal to 7 over 3. So the first method is to solve for x using algebra. The second method is through squaring, and I'll show you what this means. We know that if we have any expression, the absolute value of p whole squared, it is essentially the same thing as p whole squared. And that's because whenever we square a number, we'll always get a positive result. So let's say that p is equal to negative 5. So the absolute value of negative 5 squared is the same thing as 5 squared, which is equal to negative 5 squared. And both of these equal to 25. So we can apply this same exact rule when we're solving equations in the form listed above. So ax plus b is equal to cx plus d. Let's look at, let's relook at one of our examples and solve it through this way. Let's say that we have, once again, 2x plus 1. The absolute value of 2x plus 1 is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3. Now, what we can do is we can essentially square both sides and we'll have the same result. So we can have 2x plus 1 whole squared is equal to x minus 3 whole squared. And how we got this was we essentially took 2x plus 1, we squared both sides, so we got 2x plus 1 squared plus 1 is equal to the absolute value of x minus 3 squared. And using the rule listed above, we came to this conclusion. So now all we need to do is to open this up and solve it using algebra. So a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. So 4x squared plus 4x plus 1 is equal to x squared minus 6x plus 9. This gives And at this point, I also encourage you to look at our previous example. So x plus 1 is equal to x minus 5 are the absolute values. And to try and solve this by squaring and see if you also get an answer of 2. Now, the last method that we can use, or that you'll be sometimes asked to do, is to solve for it graphically. And as you probably guessed, you're essentially just going to draw a graph of both of the equations and see the point where they intersect. So let's use the example of the absolute value of x minus 5 is equal to the absolute value of x plus 1. So we just need to sketch their absolute value graphs. And if you don't know how to do this, I have a video on this in my chapter for functions. So first, let's draw this graph, the absolute value of x minus 5. So the absolute value of x minus 5. So let's first draw the graph of y is equal to x minus 5. This would meet the y-axis, where x equals 0, so at negative 5. And it would meet the x-axis, where y is equal to 0, so therefore at x is equal to 5. OK, and then that would look something like that. And we reflect it. 
right here, this point would be five. Next, we draw our graph for the absolute value of x plus one, or y is equal to the absolute value of x plus one. First, once again, we draw the graph of y is equal to x plus one. So this meets the y-axis, where x is equal to zero, so the point one over here, and it meets the x-axis at the point where x is equal to zero, so at the point negative one right here. So we can sketch this graph as well. It goes down over here, and we can reflect it in the x-axis, so something like this. And the point of intersection, as you can see, is right over here. And that happens at the point where x is equal to 2. Therefore, x is equal to 2. And how I got this was, I essentially, you'll have to solve for it algebraically anyway when you're solving it through the graphical method just to make sure that your answer is right. So through that, we got that x is equal to 2.